Well, as you saw in my latest video, this was my portable charging station that I made to be safer way to charge my batteries after the one exploded in the charging bag, which I have no faith in anymore. Well, we're going to go out and test this right now and see how this works. But I also wanted to point out to you that I've come up with actually another way of charging my batteries. And this is it, right here in my charging grill. So let's see what's cooking here tonight. Oh, look at that. Well, more on my charging grill a little bit later. First, let's test my charging station. We're going to put a battery in it, we're going to blow it up, and we're going to see if it actually protects from fire. You know, as reliable as LiPos are, including most of the smaller ones uh, that contain safety circuits, they're built in to actually prevent any problem, nothing's 100% as seen by my charger exploding along with the battery, which was in a LiPo safe bag, which was totally destroyed instantly too. Glad I was on top of it. Some folks said I should actually separate the chargers with a metal plate, and that might help, but the plate still needs holes in it for the charge wires and the balance plug, and a fire can get through that too. You know you keep improving things as you learn by separating the chargers and protecting them with metal plate. Typically I only charge one battery at a time, so I wasn't really concerned about separating the batteries. But since I actually had a fire that burned my house and garage down, which actually was determined by the state fire inspector to actually have started by an electrical fire in the attic and not by a lipo. I wasn't charging anything anyway. So I'm pretty paranoid and not taking any chances these days. I just simply want to show you what I'm trying to do. Because no design is perfect and nothing is 100%. Well, the whole point of these experiments and setups is to actually make folks aware and keep any fire from spreading. Smoke damage and the smell was really the only damage I had, and my class BC Marine Fire Extinguisher put out the fire before it spread. Like I said, it was right on top of it. And the actual charger exploded outside the lipo bag, and that's why I decided it needed to be inside too. I'd probably change it out anyway, which I did after that, because it may have been the charger at fault, as I expected was true with mine anyway. So now I've decided to actually test my charging station and see if it actually does protect from fire. You know, one person even said I was a stupid moron for putting the chargers and everything inside the box. Well, my gosh, you know, the charger burst into flames outside the box. I'm not going to take that chance again. I mean, once something happens to you, you're a little more cautious. And second of all, they said there was over $500 worth of stuff, and what a waste, burning money. Like, you kidding me? First of all, it doesn't happen that often, but it does. That's still cheap insurance compared to losing your house plus all your possessions. I know, I have been there. I really can't believe some of these people don't get this because once it happens to you, you're going to change your mind. I've never actually tried to blow up a lipo on purpose. I really didn't see any uh, videos that actually show the ignition source, the charger, or how they did it. So I just decided to use 24 volts with an abundance of amperage going into the battery. And also, as I always do, I have my charger station sitting atop ceramic towel like this, um, quartz, or an old toilet tank lid. Also, many folks said you shouldn't keep all your batteries in one place. Well, most people with lots of batteries actually do. You know, if you have hundreds of batteries like I do, it's uh, pretty impractical and it'd be hard to spread them around the house. So I also keep them in a strong box, which is better than nothing. So let's blow up the battery, see if my setup is worthy of what I hoped it was, as I am at least trying to do something. Like I said, I never actually tried to blow up a battery, and uh, first I tried a 12 volt car battery, nothing happened. Then I tried 24 volts, two car batteries, nothing happened. Then I tried 115 volts AC, the circuit breaker blew, but nothing happened to the battery. Then I hooked up 36 volts, and this is what happened. Camera, 11.1 swollen dynam battery, light on in here. Oh. 
Well, the inside camera got covered with soot immediately and then abruptly shut off from a shock wave, I guess. Well, look at that. Perfect. Totally contained it. There we go, 158 degrees at the back, 100 over here, the lid, 132, totally contained, no flame shot out. All right, let's open it and see what we have. The battery is at 520. That's pretty warm. The other battery doesn't look like it has been bothered. The light is still working. The camera is kind of corroded. So uh, it doesn't look like it bothered the other battery, even though that one totally exploded. Well, one thing that I learned from making this video is that it was a lot harder to blow up this battery when I was really trying to than when I really wasn't trying to blow up the battery. But again, it's good to charge them inside a safe place and make sure you're watching it all the time. Have that fire extinguisher ready. This melted, but it didn't blow. I'm very satisfied. My box held up really good. Uh, pretty impressed. So, no damage at all to my ceramic. This is a good thing to use to charge it on. And of course, this didn't melt at all. There you go. Okay, folks, in the essence of safety, I'm going to show you something else here. This is my grill, and I have converted it into a complete charging system. It's not as portable as the other one, but it is definitely safe. It was designed for fire. I've got a quartz slab sitting in here on top of the uh, grate. I'm using my TB6B Tenergy charger. This thing is a smart charger. It has external power supply, which I like, which is down there on the bottom, right here. We're going to go ahead and connect this up now. Plug this into the balance port. There is a temperature sensor here, which is I set right on top of the battery. I got my smoke detector right in there. Nice and cool. Everything is all set. We've got it set for charge right now. I'm going to change that to uh, 
discharge, storage, fast charge, balance. It's a 5 amp, 18.5 volts. I'll hold this button down. They're asking me to confirm it now. The voltage and everything, which is right, confirm it. And it's beginning its charge. It's charging right now at 1.7 amps. If I wanted to look at the batteries count, I can see this is there all at 420, so it's pretty close. And what I'm going to do is just close the lid, lock it down, and let it cook. And of course for extra, extra safety, we can put this grill in here like this and still be able to uh, do everything. Well that's it for now folks, but at least I proved to myself that my charging station will work to prevent LiPo fires from spreading in the event of a LiPo accident. I also hope that it makes others more aware. Make sure to see the link in the video description of Rajucam Aerial Services' amazing LiPo explosion video. And thanks kindly for watching.